feeling cute, might pull my meat. Night crawlers. Don't get your mind out of the gutter, camera guy. That's what they call it, pulling meat. Pulling plastic? We pull plastic, now we're pulling our meat. Before we get y'all hot and bothered though, we're talking about night crawlers. So here's the deal. We went out and just smoked them this morning on crankbaits. We're pulling some of those new 44 mag reef runners around, jacking them up, catching them real good. You know, we did a video on that. Take a take a take a, watch that sucker because it's straight fire. Um, I mean, it, it was a fishing trip that turned into a catching trip real fast. Now we located these fish. We haven't I haven't pulled a single night crawler this year, but we're going to we're going to see. Maybe we'll catch bigger fish on the spinners. Maybe we don't catch anything. I don't know, but we're going to try it. And we got one on the first line out. So a real critical thing, tip, spinner tip number one right here is I had the clicker on. Set the dang thing in a rod holder. Don't hold these things. Guys always want to do that in my boat. I'm setting other lines and I look over, bloop, bloop, thing's on. We already got one. So do more than one thing at once. Be efficient. Leave those clickers on because a lot of times you catch a lot of fish doing just what we did here which is just letting the thing out. Honestly, pulling spinners, it, it's, it requires a little more talent and paying attention, but when the bite gets tough, they are the deal. Because this, you, you can't quite, you, everything's gotta be slowed down when you're pulling spinners. Everything from the boat speed to reeling to all that stuff. And so we lost a couple there when we were getting set up. We had three on at once and I was trying to, trying to rush it. Here, we got one on this one over here, right here. And we're gonna show you the little nuances on how you get those bites, because your gear is super, super important. The slower you go, the more presentation matters. And if you think about that statement, ice fishing really, really, really matters how you present the bait. And when you're fishing spinners, it matters, I think, in my opinion, more than it does with crankbaits. I told you spinners don't work. These Silver Street spinners, maybe you can give me a little overlay on the screen. I've got the line set, it's again a lot of experience here, but you know, I've got these lines set with the spinners. We're using one ounce inline weights. We're doing about one, 1 1.2 miles an hour. And I've got them set at about the same depths we were running those crankbaits at. I wasn't gonna reinvent the wheel. So you notice I got fluorocarbon, I tie my own spinners. I use Silver Street stock ones, but a lot of my, a lot of my stuff I tie, you know, they're about six foot long. Well, this thing is hooked like country. Steve couldn't have lost this one, I promise you now. Got him strung up like that. Now you see, that's a little better quality fish right there. That right there, that thing's got, I mean, you can't even get your hands around that girl. She's naughty. But again, this is why it's so important to go slow. See where that, see where that fish is hooked? Right there. If you rip that thing or you pull hard, it's gonzy. Game over. That's why I tell you guys, real slow, do not rod pump. This fish guaranteed would have been gone. Now we did get him with a little stinger down swinging there, but I promise you that thing probably would not have, not have hung out. That is a solid, solid, solid fish. We don't have time to talk about things because we've got another one. Oh, we got one on the other one. We have three on now. Now we, yeah. now we still have three. We, we had a delayed quad. Four lines, four fish. Oh, I'm hit it well. You don't even need to have a waypoint. We caught them here already. Yep. This is just straight catching, people. Probably the biggest tip that I can give you, but I can't, I can't really teach you, but I can tell you to pay attention to it, is just learning what a bite actually is. Like camera dude over here has been with me for over a decade. How many times have you seen a spinner bite? Never. Yeah, I, he ain't lying, unfortunately. But, you know, they're, they're much more subtle and you have to learn that it's kind of like watching your line get pulled through jello is the ana analogy I use. I can tell you one thing, they're a little bit better grade on some of these spinner fish. So he was hooked just in the nose. Whew. Just in the schnauzer. Again, come in here, camera dude. Look at that. That's it. Just barely hooked in that. That's why it's so, I mean, as you watch me reel these in, you know, it looks like I'm being super delicate, and I am, because if you're not, 
it's a bad deal. That's it. That's all it took to get that out. And that's why a lot of guys don't like spinners. And again, you don't, today's not a day you'd have to be pulling spinners, but I promise you, on those days where that bites off a little bit, you know, we've got storm systems coming through, maybe those fish get deeper, you know, we can fish deeper a lot easier doing this than we can with crankbaits. Like we were talking about those 44 mags we were catching them on before. You get about 20 feet, it gets pretty tough. And you could argue you put snap weights and other things, but it really complicates stuff. Where with these inline weights, simple, simple to get down. Very, very easy. Oh, he threw my blade, that dirty son of a gun. What a dirt ball. Now this one, I think we got it figured out we got the color that this one wanted. See where that thing's at? We don't have to worry about that coming off. Country Steve couldn't have lost that one. That one is down in the guts. That's why a pair of forceps when you're spinner fishing is mandatory. You can see I got that fish out, it's not bleeding, and he was hooked in the gill. Your best friend, I go for these forceps each and every time. And since I've got no lines in the water, I'm going to take a second to show you how I tie my personal spinner rigs. So those are about, whatever that is, about a hand width apart. And I've got a number two Gamagatsu, single octopus hook. We're on 20 or 22 pound uh, structure FC Sunline. And down to a number eight Gamagatsu treble hook. That's my go-to slow spinner speed deal right there. And the big thing is, is you want to hook these up. I'm going to reuse this old crawler, but you want to get pretty close to the nose. You see this crawler's been like a drug through an alley. Stretch that thing out, which is really important, so it runs straight in the water, and just stick one of the hooks in. You notice that last one had that red hook all the way down its throat. Good indication that that was the right blade, which we're gonna have to get another one out. Because I must have been out of practice and did not lock that sucker down. Well, how many of you guys have been fishing by yourself? We'd like to hear your comments. You know, what do you talk about? You got the, you know, I'd probably have some ghetto jams blazing. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What do you talk about when you're fishing by yourself? That's yeah. the question you just asked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you talk about when you're fishing by yourself? You know, in your crazy head? I mean, are you got some tunes blazing? I probably have my Rangers got me a nice little stereo and I'd probably be blowing up some gangster tunes to be perfectly honest. You know, what are you thinking about? We'd like to hear your comments below. We'd like to hear your comments of what you think I'm thinking right now. My camera guy, he doesn't like me still, right? <laughs> no brainer. Knew that. Knew that. Counter! Six. Man, they must be getting deeper. The camera guy's getting more jacked up. You're just like my clients. I'm you just, just making stuff. You just make numbers up, I know. It's great. You know, when we started there, I, I would say that, you know, our, I don't know if it's just the spot we're on or what we're doing there, but our, our spinner bite while we're catching them just non-stop i would say that you know our fish were of better size oh this one's just well here, here's a good thing that i can show you we, we learn here this one this is going to be a tough deal we're going to have to probably cut it so come here camera dude you remember i showed you before that the one we just caught them on that same color Look where that other second hook is, down its trote. I don't know how you spell trote, but we mean tr trote. So again, this is why it's really important to have those forceps and you go in there and do a little surgical operation. And you can let her go. By the way, I get people that say, don't throw them in the water like that. Shut up, you don't know what you're talking about. Here's the deal. If you barely let them in, yeah, seriously. If you barely let them in the water, they'll, they, they're all whacked out. You need to put them head first and toss them in like that. I'm not talking about slamming them in there like it's you know basketball and concrete. But toss them in the water head first. You know, you don't want waters going against the gills. Don't pull them backwards. It's a bad deal. I've seen enough fish when you just gently low them in there like some type of TV deal, and the seagulls are coming pecking at them because they don't have their equilibrium. They're all whacked out with their swim bladder. So help them out. Give them a gentle toss in like that. And that's what works. Especially you guys overseas that don't know what walleyes are. They're always commenting on there, tell me how to release them. Zip it, you don't know what you're talking about. Your bullhorn ain't no good on my channel. My legit hands and our arms are legit tired. I don't know how many we've caught, 30 plus? Just, poof. 
problems. You're sitting at your cubicle, you know, sitting in your office watching this thing or something. You go, shut up, dude. <laughs> we don't want to hear your noise. Well, just like our day, we are winding things up. Thanks for watching. Spinners, crankbaits, we're doing it all out here. Make sure you subscribe. Go see us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, of course. Big water fishing. That's what we're doing. <laughs>